Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do a book haul revisit for the month of October. There were nine books that I brought into my library in October 2019. I am going to go through them right now and talk a little bit about uh, which ones I've read, which ones I have not read, and that's what this book haul revisit is all about. So we'll get into it. Uh, it has been cold and wet and rainy where I am. I hope you're, I'm kind of bundled up. Hope you're enjoying the weather wherever you are, staying safe, and uh, voting early if you can. If not, I hope uh, voting gets going for you soon and that you are registered and ready to go. I We filled out our ballot, now we just have to drop them off at the election office. So that's done, did my part, and we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, let's get into the book haul. Like I said, there were nine books that I brought into my library last October. And we'll get into how many of them I've read. And there is one book that it has, I've already gotten rid of, but we'll get to that. So the first book that I got last year was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I picked this up at uh, my local used bookstore because I've just, I've heard really good things about this book here on BookTube and out in the world. And I, I happen to be a big fan of the movie Rebecca, but I've never read the book. So I got this last October thinking I was going to read it immediately because it kind of has that Halloween vibe, but I did not pull that off. So I have not actually read this, but it is definitely something I would still like to like to read. And um, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna happen this month, but it's still gonna be on my list and I'm still looking forward to reading it. So, and especially since I got it for cheap <laughs> at a used bookstore, I don't, I don't feel bad that it has sat there for a year and may sit for another couple months. I, I do wanna try to get to this soon because I've heard really good things about it, but we'll see how that goes. And that's Rebecca. Then I, so if you follow along, you know that E.M. Forster is currently my favorite author. And I, while I was at the used bookstore getting Rebecca, I saw The Longest Journey by him, which is one of the few books by him that I have not gotten around to reading. I, I have actually was unfamiliar with it and I'm still kind of unfamiliar with it. And it does not actually have a description of it, but it is by E.M. Forster. So that's exciting. <laughs> and, um, I, like I said, I got it at the used bookstore, so it was cheap, so I don't really mind. And I had no plan to get to it, but I know because I love E.M. Forster that it's something that I probably will be getting to and l continue to look forward to having around just for when I'm in an E.M. Forster mood, whenever that will be. Then there is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This book sounds really quirky and fun, and I, I, I think I'm actually currently on a wait list for the audio of it and I think this is and this is a conversation that's gonna happen with some of the other books that are coming up I think something I'm learning about myself as I do book haul revisits is that I need to be a little bit more intentional about thinking about books that I am likely to read in physical format or books that I am likely more likely to listen to on audio at some point when they are available and I think that's kind of the case with this one. I think I'm much more likely to read this on audio, or listen to this on audio. Uh, like I said, I am currently on a hold list for it. I think it's going to be weeks <laughs> before it's available, but it's still something I'm interested in, but I think that is going to be the much more likely way that I would get to it. And then once I read it, I, once I listen to the audio, I can determine whether or not I want to keep the physical copy of the book. Um, it's still something I'm interested in. So the story of it is that there's a woman uh, is, has been lacking purpose in her life and a friend who she has become been estranged from asks her to help watch her children. Uh, her, I believe the friend's husband is running for political office, but um, they have children who spontaneously combust when they become emotional. And this friend who becomes their uh, sort of nanny gets to know the kids and they form a, a sort of bond and it helps her find purpose in her life. I, I, I'm speculating on that last part, but that's kind of the premise, which sounds a little bit wild, but kind of fun. And that's what I've heard about this book so far, that it's a, a little quirky, a little bit fun. So I'm looking forward to the audio of that. By the way, I did not do plot, uh, plot description of the first two books that I mentioned, so let's double back. If you're unfamiliar with Rebecca, basically uh, it's about the new Mrs. De Winter and how she moves into Manderley, this new home, and she is, basically the house is haunted by the ghost of Rebecca, who was her husband's first wife, and creepy, ominous things happen. She starts learning more about this Rebecca's past, and 
it's good. It's just very good. And then, like I said, I don't actually really know the premise of The Longest Journey. All it has is, all, it only has quotes about E.M. Forster on the back of the book. And I'm not going to look it up right now. I just know that because it's E.M. Forster, it's probably something that I will enjoy. And then we have Ta-Nehisi Coates' The Water Dancer. This is a book that I'm glad I have in physical format. Uh, so I, I think I have kind of peeked at whether or not an audio of, or, of this would be available anytime soon. And I don't think I'm actually on a hold list, but I probably would. But I am glad I had it on the have this. I, I've heard really mixed things about it. It sounds like there are magical realism elements to it. And I don't know if magical realism is the accurate term, not having read it. But it seems like that is something that really kind of put people off. This is uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' first novel. He has done uh, nonfiction books before that. I have listened to uh, Between the World and Me which ta Coates narrated, and it was really good. But this was his first uh, work of fiction, and I've heard mixed things about it, but I'm still very curious. It's basically a story of a man in slavery who discovers that he has some kind of magical power with water, and I don't know a lot of details about that. I think some of the magical elements are what put people off on this book, it seems. But I'm, I'm still curious, and I want to get to it, and hopefully I will be getting to it at some point. Like I said, I may end up seeking out the audio, but this one for sure I think is going to be an interesting one to keep on my shelf, um, just based on ta Coates's reputation and what I've read of him from his nonfiction before. So still happy to have it on my shelf, still want to get to it. And that's kind of a recurring theme, but... Then we have Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Now, this is kind of in the same boat as Nothing to See Here. I got this because it seemed like a good October read. And even last year, I didn't think that I was probably going to get to it in October. I had a feeling that maybe once winter came around, like full-on winter with snow and everything, it would be a great book to hunker down with. And then I didn't end up doing a lot of reading in January and February of this year. So that ship kind of sailed. I do think that this will will still be a good book for that situation if I'm doing more reading in January or February this year. Um, if you follow along, you know, in February I had I had surgery. I had hernia repair and uh, it was a long recovery. So I think I only read two books in February total. <laughs> so it was kind of a wash. But so this is still something I'm looking forward to. I think it will still fit that winter vibe, especially since it's a, it's a chunky book. This is like a proper brick of a book. I have read Stephen Chbosky's only other book, which is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Basically, I read that book at the perfect time. I was just graduating from high school when it was published, I believe, and that was exactly the moment. I don't know that I would love it as much if I went back to it now. I have heard mixed things about this. It took him about 20 years to write another book, and here it is. <laughs> and I've heard mixed things about it. I, I do think it could still work for that like the nice winter curled up on the couch kind of vibe and we'll see if i get to it this january or february so i'm tbd on that i may also think about an audio for this one i think this is something that if i was thinking about it again i would probably say oh i should look for that on audio even though the audio would be really long <laughs> and but i'm still interested in reading it then we get to something i was really looking forward to this time last year when it was released and which I honestly thought I would have read by the end of the year and didn't. And it's Find Me by Andre Osman, the sequel to Call Me By Your Name. Some people say don't call it a sequel. It's sort of just a continuation of the story. Continuations of stories are sequels, but hey. Um, so this picks up on the story of Call Me By Your Name years later and I, I think one thing that's interesting about it from what I've heard is that it, it focuses more on the father from Call Me By Your Name than it does on Elio and Oliver. And I think people really just wanted a sequel to Elio, like more of Elio and Oliver. I struggled in the first place because I really question whether or not Call Me By Your Name needs a sequel. I think it kind of ends in a really perfect way and it is perfect as it was. So do we really need more about Elio and Oliver or should we just leave it as it, as it is? Part of why I still haven't gotten to this book is because the feedback I've gotten it is that it's dis really disappointing and really bad. My husband, who re recommended Call Me By Your Name, read it and hated it. So 
that's made me really reluctant to get into Find Me. And I'll be honest, part of me is really now wondering if I'm going to read it at all. I keep saying I'll get to it at some point, but I think by the end of the year, I'm probably going to have to make a decision on this one. And I don't have to, but I, I will probably try to come to a decision on this one because I think I like Call Me By Your Name as it is. And especially if Find, Find Me is subpar and not really up to that standard, then what, why am I going to put myself through that? So I might as well just leave it as it is. I tend to be a bit of a... Not tend to. I, I, I am open to sequels when authors... Uh, write them about uh, popular works but I also have uh, I sometimes think they're unnecessary and stories can be left alone like I did not pick up the testaments I don't think I will pick up the testaments I really like A Handmaid's Tale the way it ends and I don't really want to know more about that I, th I think a lot of people like having more tidy resolutions and I think sometimes a story is great without that pat ending. I don't want to say pat ending, but without tidying things up completely. And that's kind of where I'm standing with this. So this is something I was really excited about last October. Did not get to. And at this point, probably will not get to. So I'm probably, I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to actually like unhaul it or hold on to it in the hope that I'm going to get to it in the future. Certainly, so my plan with Book Hall Revisits is mostly to hold myself accountable for what I... Uh, and, and give myself a little new ways of thinking about the stuff that I bring into my library. Like I said, one thing I've learned by doing them is that I should be more intentional about thinking about what I'm going to read in physical form and what I want to listen to on audio. So I'm learning things about myself as a reader and how I purchase and what I should purchase as I do these. And then... When I do them next year, I'm going to try to come up with some hard and fast decisions about, okay, is if I haven't read this yet, am I going to? Is this something I really want, want to keep on my shelf and take up space? And when it comes to that, this one could be in trouble. So if I haven't read it by next October, certainly I'll probably get rid of it. And in the meantime, it'll probably sit there while I waffle back and forth about whether or not I, I want to. But this is likely something I will not be getting to anytime soon, which is disappointing. Although I guess it's not all that surprising, because since after I loved Call Me By Your Name, I uh, happened to see, I think it was Eight White Nights in a store not long after I read it, and after, after I read Call Me By Your Name. And I was so excited to read something else by Andre Asman that I immediately purchased it, and I hated that book. I did not even finish it. I aggressively hated it. So, I part of me also wonders if Andre Asman is an author who really only had one good book in him, which sounds like a really nasty thing to say. But, I, I, and to be fair, I have not read his other book. I believe he has at least one other book. Okay, so he's the author of Eight White Knights, Call Me By Your Name, Out of Egypt, False Papers, Alibis, and Enigma Variations. So he has one, two, three, four other books <laughs> that I have not read, to be fair. So... I, I shouldn't cast aspersions, basically. But you do wonder. And that's where I'm at with Find Me. Uh, the next book is actually the one that I unhauled. It's A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, which I was excited to read because I had loved The Heart's Invisible, Invisible Furies by John Boyne. That was my favorite book that I read in the year that I read it, which I think was uh, 2018? Something somewhere around there. And I, I loved that book. And then A Ladder to the Sky, I think I had um, early access to it and wasn't really... I, I read like the first 10 pages and wasn't into it, so I just put it down and thought, I don't know, maybe I'll circle back to that one, maybe I won't. And then I would never got around to it. And then it won the BookTube Prize last year. So I thought, all right, well, I'll try that. And Sean the Book Maniac decided, uh, agreed to a buddy read of it, and we both hated it a lot which you can tell because I immediately unhauled it as soon as we finished it I just got I just took it to my used bookstore and traded it <laughs> so um, 
and from what I remember, it's just a messy, I think, badly pl- plotted story from my point of view. But I know there are a lot of people who liked it. Obviously, there are because it won the Book Two Prize. But from my point of view, it was, I just did not like the structure. And I did not like the character. I thought there were a lot of things that did not make sense. Sean pointed out at one point that a character mentions that they have a signed copy of E.M. Forster's Maurice. Maurice was published after E.M. Forster died. So there's no way that anybody could have a signed first edition of that book. <laughs> it would be impossible. And there are that's kind of, to me, emblematic of a lot of the problems with The Ladder to the Sky, which I read but did not like. And that is evidenced by the fact that I don't have it anymore. Very, very happily got rid of that one. But the next book I got is something I'm still looking forward to reading, even though it is also kind of like Imaginary Friend. It's a chunky book. It's Duck's New Report by Lucy Ellman. I had put my name on the hold list for this at the library, and I had it, and I actually started it, and I think I got 75 pages in, but I was never going to, I was there was no way I was going to get to the end by the time uh, the book was due back at the library, so I just returned it and bought a copy, and my other thinking of that was that this was put out by a small independent publisher in the UK, and they really took a chance on this long, <laughs> really long book that only has, I think, eight sentences in the whole thing. So it's basically just long sent eight long sentences comprising this whole book, like one stream of consciousness thought, basically. And they took a chance publishing this, and it paid off. They were a finalist for the Booker Prize last year. They did not win. And But I think that's audacious publishing. So I decided two things. One, okay, I'm not going to get this library book back on time, and I feel like I should support the publisher that took a chance on... A really out there book and didn't just publish like mainstream things that you might expect so I feel like I should support that so I made sure I went to my one of my local stores and picked up a copy of Ducks Newberry Report and I'm still looking forward to reading it my plan last year was similar to what I was thinking for imaginary friend I thought okay when winter comes on this will be the perfect book to curl up with and just tear through on a couch and then I mentioned what happened in January. But January, I was just a little bit, I wanted to take a little bit of a reading break because, and I allowed myself to do that because I knew that I, I would have things to talk about on the channel because I had all my year end wrap up and plans for 2020 and things like that. And then in February, I, had, I kind of unexpectedly had surgery and that, walked, that threw everything out the window. So this is still something I want to read. It feels like everybody else has already gotten to it by now, but I would still like to do it, and I'm looking forward to it, and that's kind of still my plan. Hopefully, either during the holidays or once winter comes on, this will be something that will be on the docket for me. And even if I don't get to it, I'm happy that I purchased a copy. Like I said, it's support the publisher, support Lucy Ellman, uh, and the chance that they took on that book. And the final book from last year's book haul was Belonging, A German Reckons with History and Home by Nora Krug. This was something that I picked up in that uh, my, my local indie when I, while I was getting Find Me and Duck's Newberry Report. Find Me I had pre-ordered, so when it came out, I, uh, I, I just picked it up and they had Duck's Newberry Report, so I picked it up. But they used to have this really great table full of graphic novels and graphic memoirs and I like that genre, so I always used to browse it. So I was looking at this, and it ties in with a lot of my interests as a reader. And then the person who worked there started talking to me about it. They actually it had a staff recommend. They, at that bookstore, they have little staff recommends bookmarks that they put in. And the person who was working that day was the person who had put that recommendation in it. And they were talking to me about it, and they, they really just sold me on the book. So I picked it up, took it home, and I have read this one. And I liked it. I didn't love it. But basically what this is, that Nora Krug was born, at, uh, I think, decades after the uh, World War, after World War II was over. But because she is German, um, she and her family have history with World War II. And she kind of reckons with her family's history in World War II and does a little bit of interrogation and digging and investigation into... Her family's stance on what would ha- what happened in World War II, what they did, what they didn't do, and it ties in with this story that I think is fairly common for German citizens, especially after World War II, where they try to reckon with their family's role in what happened and this I, this idea of 
lingering generational culpability, which seems like something German people deal with a lot more than, say, Americans who, like, who are very resistant to the idea of reckoning with slavery and ra institutional racism in America. But I found it very interesting. And this book is structured in a sort of mixed media way, which is interesting. So there are collections of like photographs and you can see like this is a photo that where she cut out the, the, the center and put words. One thing that bothered me about this book and it's not actually that much of a thing. I'm looking for an example. And of course now I can't find one. Um, there's a lot of breaking up of the text in ways that just it, it it happens a little too much that I didn't like it and that I, th I think the parts of it are really interesting but it also feels a little bit at a remove and that was my struggle with it but I still thought it was really interesting and fascinating and I would recommend picking it up like I said I think this is something it's something I'm interested in I love when somebody interrogates the past and this book is very much that so I read it and I recommend it so again Nine books that I brought into my library last October. Of those, I read two. Belonging by Nora Krug and A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. Belonging was good. <laughs> I hated A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, and I got rid of it immediately. So that leaves seven books that I still need to get to. Of the seven, The Longest Journey is something that, it, it, it's like shelf filler. It's something that I, I am happy to have on my shelf, have no plans to get to anytime soon. But it's there whenever I want to get to it. I definitely want to get to Rebecca. I definitely want to read The Water Dancer and Duck's Newburyport. And Nothing to See Here and Imaginary Friend. Maybe. Um, like I said, I, I, I would be seeking out Nothing to See. I have on a hold for Nothing to See Here on audio. Imaginary Friend, I'm, I might do on audio. I might wait until winter and see if I get to it, but prioritize Duck's Newburyport. Find Me is in limbo. I don't know what I'm going to do about that book. But if you have thoughts about any of these books, have you read Find Me? Do you think I should try it? Should I just let it go? Um, if you have comments on any of the other books or recommendations based on any of these, please, you know what to do. The comment section is down below. Let me know. I will be happy to hear what you have to say. And as always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.